Morning guys, Alex again coming at you and a real quick story about what's happened in the last couple of days with my 2018 Mustang and my 2015 Mustang. So the 2018 Mustang, I've had it for three or four days and at 304 miles, the fuel pump quit. That's right, the factory fuel pump on this car ended up quitting. Now I've heard it happening a couple of times to people and I couldn't believe it. I thought it was user error. They installed something that fried it, who knows. But I ended up becoming one of those guys that had a brand new vehicle, had a have a fuel pump failure. And I started thinking to myself, <clears throat> crap, I'm a signs guy. You know, crap, this is a sign. You know, I, it's my first new car I've ever bought. It's a decent chunk of change and I wanted, I just wanted it because I thought all the data that we've collected is promising. And then all of a sudden it shits the bed and I went, holy crap, this is crazy. But I will, I'm not going to be deterred. Got the fuel pump replaced. The fuel pump, by the way, is down there, guys. Um, got it replaced under warranty. They took care of me. So no issues. Starts, runs, and drives. So what I'm going to do is this. I already have enough miles on it to actually do some wide open throttle stuff. And I'm going to test two things today. <clears throat> First of all, I'm going to test the quality of fuel that is currently in the tank from the dealership. Typically, I see these cars get about 22, 23 degrees of timing at wide open throttle. Anything above that, is you're just up money on the stock tune. And then I'm going to throw a flex fuel tune in it. I'm going to let it learn the alcohol percentage. And then I'm going to go ahead and log and show you guys how much spark it'll see. If it sees anything above 25, 26, we're making more power, <clears throat> plain and simple, without having to shove more timing in it. The car will sense that it has better octane, aka ethanol and it'll be a happier car and see more timing. I'm also gonna test the theory that everyone out there is talking to me about. They're all saying that the shift forks are garbage in this car. So I have not gone wide open throttle yet hardcore on this car, and I'm gonna feel if the clutch is still being an issue. 15 to 17 Mustangs had lockout issues, meaning the clutch would not disengage at high RPM. It would become spongy and it would not let you go in a gear. My suspicion is this. The same thing is happening to these clutches. And people are manhandling the shifter and cramming it in gear and breaking the fork, which is probably weaker, but it shouldn't break if you're shifting it normally. So I'm going to test those two theories out right now. My plan today, this Saturday, is to do a, that video on this car and do a whole other video on that car to get you up to speed on it. Just to show you real quick, don't mind my face, uh, show you real quick what it's reading. And when I give it some gas, you see knock goes negative. Negative means Negative knock means it's adding timing. See, short-term fuel trims are within 5%. Remember, this is a stock cold air and Ford's tune. So when you guys are looking at short-term fuel trims and you're 4% off around cruise, that's about the same threshold that it is stock. People typically don't pay attention to it until there's a tune in it. So let me find a good enough spot. Uh, go wide open throttle in third gear. See what kind of spark we see. This is the best I can do, guys. So, 3,000 RPMs, third gear, advanced track off. Now we're gonna go wide open. Right there. So, I saw about 23 degrees of spark all the way at the top at about 1,600 RPM or so. Um, I didn't really look at knock. I wanted to look at the road. I don't wanna die. Okay, I just finished flashing with the flex tune after making the wide open throttle pull on the pump gas that was in it from uh, the dealership. Let's get it started. These cars actually sound pretty good from the factory. I don't think they require crazy exhaust. Uh, maybe a cat delete and it'll make it just right or it'll be annoying and timmy, who knows. But let's get everything configured. Let's see if with flex fuel, it'll see more spark than it did with the uh, gasoline that was in from the factory. Knock sensors were happy on that pull that I made. So I came back here, flashed it, and see uh, see how it all does now with the flex tune in it with the 85 from the local racetrack gas station. Excellent, I wanted to make sure that I can get this on video. So I wanted to make sure that on the four matrix screen, I can get the things you really need for flex fuel. The alcohol percentage on the top right, alcohol learn flag, what is the alcohol learn flag mean when it goes from zero all the way up to well, actually when, it, when it's at zero it's still learning the alcohol content since there is pump gas in this car which is 10% ethanol it's correct it learned 
basically 10% ethanol and the alcohol learned flag stopped learning so it learned the ethanol in the fuel properly pump gas is E10 so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up with E85 okay there is pump gas in the vehicle right now it has about a quarter tank left so I'm gonna go ahead and fill up with E85 and not change a damn thing and watch the alcohol percentage start to learn all the way up to the alcohol learn flag goes to one because once you start filling up the uh, learning procedure uh, restarts and then we're going to go make a watt hit, wide open throttle pull, see if we can get more than 25 degrees of spark, which is what we saw on the gasoline that was in it from the dealership. Filling up with E85 on the same tune. And I'm going to sit here and make sure it learns the content before I roll out and make a wide open throttle pull. It took 12 whole gallons. I believe uh, capacity for these guys is 14. So let's get inside without cutting and um, go through the learning <clears throat> procedure with the engage. okay? No one's around, so I'm gonna just roll out here and put the engage right here. It's not really mounted yet, and I'm not gonna mount it anywhere. I'm just gonna put a suction cup on the guy because I, I don't wanna permanently mount it, so. So the alcohol learn flag should go to zero. Let me actually move out of the way, move out of a pump, so I'm not that guy taking up a pump for a couple minutes while this guy learns the proper content in the tank <laughs> okay so alcohol learn flag at zero <clears throat> they we give you directions as to how to relearn everything so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna rev hold it for a little bit and let it kind of sample some of the uh, <clears throat> ethanol now remember the stuff that's still in the lines remember there's still stuff some stuff in the pump in the lines uh, in, the, in the rail in the injectors once it actually starts making its way to the engine you'll start to see the alcohol percentage uh, start to go up. Once it gets in the engine, once it starts burning the actual ethanol, the alcohol percentage on the top right will start to go up. So I'm just holding it at about 1800 RPM for a little bit. I'm not gonna bore you with a lot, but this is basically what we ask you to do in the directions. You'll also notice while it's burning pump gas, measuring the air fuel, it'll stay at around 14, which it should. Once E85 gets in the system, that number will start to drop down as it should because you have more ethanol in the actual uh, tank. The more it learns the ethanol, the lower that number will get and the higher this number will get. Okay, so it looks like some alcohol has started to make its way into the <clears throat> actual uh, combustion. And this guy is slowly starting to drop into the 13.8, 13.9 area. That's moving along nicely right now. Again, I'll pause and kick, keep going to not bore you and fill you with this whole learning procedure. Once the alcohol learn flag goes to one, it has stopped learning and we'll see what we end up with. And see guys, the more ethanol gets in there and gets learned, that gauge gets closer and closer to 10.0, which is what it should end up at, 10.0, which is stoic, stoichiometric value for the fuel is uh, basically 10 9.89 or 9.85 depending on who you talk to oh she's flying baby she's flying well there you have it i probably had more pump gas in the car than i thought i did maybe two and a half gallons so it blended to about 60 or so percent ethanol and the gauge indicates about about as much so now we're gonna see if I can get more timing out of this guy by making a wide open throttle pull. Remember, I got about 25 degrees peak, averaged about 23 on the pull of with pump gas. Now that the alcohol has been learned, let's see how much spark I can get out of this guy with 60% uh, ethanol in the tank. Okay, third gear, traction off. Let's see how much, Mexico, we're properly way the hell over in Mexico. It took me a long time to get here. So now we'll see how much spark we can get out of the 58% uh, learned alcohol value. Let's go. Wow, 29 degrees and the uh, rev limiter kept climbing because it has a tune in it now. So it saw a peak of 29 degrees with a learned alcohol value of 58. Now, I know that in the tune configuration, 
that's Max Spark. He hit the top of the table based on the limit that we're allowing it to go to. So you don't necessarily need 85% ethanol to see Max Spark. 58% ethanol is way better than 10% in terms of uh, you know actual content and obviously <laughs> but you saw it right there it, the other one peaked at about 25 and it averaged 23 this one peaked at 29 and it averaged 27 26 so you know it's making more power just on the flex fuel tune with about 50 percent ethanol so now the next phase um, of actually you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna turn off the Bluetooth to make sure that there isn't a delay in the voice because I've recorded video sometimes with Bluetooth enabled and it records through this speaker and it's a little bit of a delay. So the next thing we're going to test is the shifting. Everyone is down on these shift forks and everything. I have not gone wide open throttle yet on this car. Well, I just did on the flex fuel stuff, but I, I haven't really given it a hardcore shift or anything because I wanted to wait, make sure the clutch was worn in properly. Sorry about the focus, but this is pretty much what it's going to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it, I'm going to rev it up to about 7,700 RPM in second gear, try to get the best angle possible and see if the clutch holds the shifter back. And that'll be basically clutch lockout, not necessarily a shifter issue. So let's get after it. shifter either I'm trying to be real methodical about getting it at the right angle into gear not going you know too much jerking and stuff you know it it just goes right into gear I'm gonna do a simulated drag pass record it and we'll see if I get any lockout or shifter issues and hopefully that'll for now debunk the myth that these forks are made of glass they might break eventually but if the clutch doesn't lock me out, I think I'll be okay. Another thing I noticed real quick is this car needs four tens. The gear ratio separation uh, from you know one, two, three, four is a lot different than the eleven to fifteen or eleven to seventeen MT eighty twos. It is now like a GT five hundred, where first gear first gear is closer to three zero, and fourth gear is one to one, as we're from eleven to seventeen first gear was like 360 something or 350 something and fifth gear was one to one so if you're dynoing this car on the dyno on 2018 you got a dyno in fourth 11 through 17 you have to dyno them in fifth gear so this car needs i think a 410 because it revs to about 8,000 rpms with a tune it has a 20 in 2018 intake manifold duh it's a 2018 um, and I think it just needs that extra little oomph. To, if you're gonna keep it naturally aspirated, if you're gonna get froggy and party on naturally aspirated, I, if you're gonna get froggy and party naturally aspirated, you need four tens. If you're gonna boost it, I think uh, keep the gear and you should be good to go. So I'm gonna come over here real quick, come to a quick stop, make a simulated drag pass, see if the forks don't explode, and we'll end the video. And. Uh, I've already shown you what the ethanol can do in terms of spark. I'll see what the deal is with these transmissions. I'll try to come to a stop quick because there's a truck coming. It's a little wet, but for video purposes, let's go. Put the window down. than happy with this purchase I did have a fuel pump fail at 300 miles but now it has a tune in it now it's happy it's making good power it's seeing good spark now yeah, the flex fuel tune is doing its job the shifter did not explode in my hands and I did 
probably more hooning in my life than most and it's all about getting it in the right gear and not jerking it and doing dumb shit sometimes a clutch is going to tell you nope this shift is not happening so you have to listen to it i understand most of you can't afford an aftermarket clutch in a brand new 2018 mustang but you gotta understand if the clutch is being an asshole don't force it in a gear because i think that's what's causing the fork failures as opposed to them i was just cruising down the street and i went boop boop with my hand and the shifter expired you know the forks went that's not what's happening i think the clutch is locking people out people are being gorillas with the shifter and trying to shove it in there so that'll be it for this video now i'm going to drive home and get video going on gene gray because i'll do two videos today thanks for listening guys we'll talk to you later